and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm back in the Range Rover Classic. It's a wonderful car. And before I even begin this video, if you haven't yet, please like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends, especially if they're Range Rover enthusiasts, because I have a lot of uh, fun coverage of Land Rover content coming your way, as well as that of the Mercedes and Porsche variety as well. So on with the video. So I bring you into my Range Rover Classic because it's a wonderful vehicle that is filled with a lot of character and a lot of design genius, especially that from Sven King. He was the person who initially designed this vehicle back in the 1960s and it was ready for its debut in 1970. Uh, Sven King was the leader of the design team at the Rover Group and rather than being the person who wanted to uh, just take everything under his own control, he decided to include other areas in which he could improve the car. Now, one of the things that he needed in terms of reliability was to source an engine. And the Rover Group at the time was working closely with GM, so they were able to source a 3.9 liter V8 engine that eventually made its way into other Range Rovers as well. I mean, this particular vehicle started off as a 3.5 liter. Um, it was bored and stroked into a 3.9 liter, and for the long wheelbase model, it was extended to the 4.2 liter variety. Great engines, all very reliable, all under the GM power plant. And the Buick Special was the perfect place to start in order to have something that was going to last the test of time. And this vehicle ran from 1970 all the way through 1995. Now, one thing that makes the Range Rover different than other SUVs of the time, like the Jeep Grand Wagoneer or the Jeep Cherokee or anything that was being presented to the public during that crucial time in the development of the SUV in the American market, what they wanted to do was bring something of a luxurious nature. And Range Rover was definitely the first one to do that. And people can argue to say that the G-Wagon was at the forefront, but the G-Wagon was developed by the Persian military as a military vehicle. And it wasn't until further in its development that it became a toy for people desiring a military truck to have a luxury feel to it. Now, the Range Rover was set to be the farm vehicle that could go off-road, but it had luxurious appointments as well. This is where you see the development and the integration of Connolly hides, Connolly leather. This particular model right now has a Sorel leather option and it looks lovely in this interior. Uh, it also included air conditioning. It included a radio. Things that were considered to be optional at the at the onset of the launch at the launch of this vehicle. You also have the wonderful Burrow Walnut Veneer, which I've had to fix several times in order to make it perfect. Um, if you, I'll link the video down below of my attempt and success at repairing and re-veneering and restructuring the uh, Burl leather veneer uh, down below and you can see the process that I had to undertake in order to make sure that the wood was of proper presentation and I think it came out it came out pretty good I was definitely proud of the outcome considering what it initially looked like and you can definitely uh, look at those videos whenever you get the chance now this Range Rover is fun to drive. It has BF Goodrich off-road tires, which are very compliant with the road, especially now during this time, because it is the winter. 
snow can be expected at any time when you live in the Northeast. I do drive everywhere, considering where I do live in Queens, and it is necessary to have vehicles in your fleet that are prepared for the onslaught of something like a winter squall or a mini blizzard or a blizzard of high magnitude, whatever, whatever it may be. You always have to be ready at all times. Uh, you don't get ready, you just stay ready. So with that said, let's link to a sequence of driving the Range Rover. typical stock Range Rover vehicle. As I've mentioned before, I upgraded the tires to the BF Goodrich off-road variety. Uh, the air suspension on this particular vehicle has been upgraded to a shock and spring setup. The roof rack that you notice above me is definitely not stock and it has prepared has been prepared for something like the Camel Trophy Expeditions. And then there's other features that I also had to integrate into the vehicle in order to make it more ready for the road or ready for the off-road for that matter. I had to make sure that the engine was of sufficient capacity. So I made sure that the tuning was reliable, everything that the vehicle would need in order to be driven every day has been adapted for daily use but the suspension has been tuned the brakes have been adjusted for everyday reliability and in addition to that the headlights because visibility is one of the key hallmarks of this vehicle when I look around this vehicle and I do a 360 turn I could see so well in this thing it is almost an embarrassment for new cars to be released and think that it is okay for, uh, for cars, especially like the first generation or the uh, the revision of the Chevy Camaro that came out about 10 years ago. I mean, you look at that car and you sit in it and the, the, the lines of visibility are almost, almost ridiculous. You can't see anything out of that car. Meanwhile, you sit in something like an Acura NSX, like the first generation, you see everything out of there because it's like you're crawling over the road. Uh, you sit in this car, you see everything clearly. I mean, when I pan around the vehicle, it is absolutely awesome. And when I get into other vehicles, it's almost like I see very little compared to, uh, compared to this vehicle. Now there are reasons for that, very specific reasons. Safety being one of the key players. Um, now we have very thin A pillars. We have very thin B pillars and very thin C pillars. The reason behind the thinness of those pillars is you have to consider side airbag federal safety regulations. 
nowadays you have an airbag in every pillar of the vehicle to ensure the safety of the passengers in the event of an imminent rollover. So you have to make sure that people are safe at all times. So when I compare this car to a new Range Rover, a lot of the key hallmarks in the design that Spen King had initially created, yeah, those lines are there. However, we have to take into consideration that the A pillars and the B pillars and the C pillars and all these pillars have to hold the entire weight of the vehicle. When I was previously at a car event, they had chopped the roof off of a Range Rover to make it look like the James Bond hero vehicle that we have commonly seen in some of the earlier in some of the earlier videos. So, when we consider all these things, we have to understand that safety is paramount when it comes to developing newer vehicles. So you can't just chop the roof off of a car because with a modern car you chop off the roof, you compromise the integrity of the vehicle as well as you compromise the design so now that i've made it back home that concludes the end of my video i'd like to thank you for watching and again please like subscribe share and spread the good word that your friend alex barris is making uh is making really cool youtube videos so whenever you get a chance uh, please look at the other links that I've provided below, and I hope you have a great holiday season. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll talk to you soon. Be well.